And now to Morocco. As the desperate search for survivors of Friday's devastating earthquake continues, many of the affected regions are remote and difficult to reach. The death toll has now risen to more than 2,800 people. And that number is likely to go up. Rescuers are digging in the dirt, rescuing their own sisters, wives, and children, and holding back the sand in the hourglass. I heard my sister screaming, brother, brother, save us. I rescued her and her son and her husband, says Mohamed Uchin. We used our bare hands because we didn't have tools. But such scenes of joy, more common shortly after the quake, are growing increasingly rare. It's now day four since the quake. And only now are rescuers able to reach the most remote victims. The crucial golden period, the best window for finding survivors who might still be struggling to survive beneath the rubble, is now closed. And many victims could not be saved. Here in the high Atlas Mountains, the epicenter of the quake, these jagged cliffs, serpentine passages, and rustic dwellings are just as awe-inspiring as they are lethal. Many of these homes are made out of mud bricks, so they don't just collapse, they crumble, and they don't leave any air pockets for survivors who tend to just choke to death on the dust. And if there was anyone to save, locals tell us they had to save themselves. The government didn't come. We didn't see anyone after the earthquake. They only came to count the number of victims. Since then, no one is here with us, says Muhammad Aitli. So Moroccans are helping each other, like here at the blood bank in Marrakesh, lining up for hours in the sun. But drop by drop, they too are rescue workers. Why are you donating blood? Actually, because, what, because of what's happened, we felt so sorry. So we would like to help because uh, the people who are injured, they are uh, uh, the Moroccan citizens. And I am one of them, so it's a must for all the Moroccans to do the same thing. Now, the Moroccan government has been delivering aid. We've seen helicopters flying overhead, military vehicles delivering medicine, food, and water. But here's the thing. At this point, it's mostly for those who have already been rescued. At this stage, so many days after the initial earthquake, we're told that it's very unlikely to find survivors who are still beneath the rubble. Anne-Marie? Uh, hoping for a miracle, Chris. Thank you. The horrific scene to Libya, the disaster unfolding there after a major storm unleashed devastating floods. Thousands are feared dead tonight. Two dams failed in the coastal city of Derna. The rushing waters gouging a path where neighborhoods once stood. In fact, take a look at the satellite images. This one showing the city just two weeks ago. Tonight, that muddy path where so much was washed right into the sea. Here's our chief foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, tonight. Tonight, catastrophe in Libya. A major storm triggering a flooding disaster, breaking two dams and sweeping away thousands of lives. Officials fear upwards of 5,000 people are dead, with as many as 10,000 still missing. Bodies lining the streets. A quarter of the eastern city of Derna wiped off the map. A Mediterranean storm lashing the coastal city with 16 inches of rain in a 24-hour period. Residents reported sounds like explosions as the massive dams gave way. There used to be a dam, this man says, now it's soil. Conflict and a crumbling infrastructure hampering rescue operations, with Libya divided by two competing governments. As limited international aid arrives, the true scale of this disaster still unknown.